Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hi. Welcome to an environmental podcast. We're a dandelion branding. We're a digital marketing agency for sustainable brands. And this is our podcast about all things environmental, where we choose a topic every month and we basically just rage talk about it, different topics each week. Yes. Always, by the way, hi. <laughs> That's <laughs> all. I am Courtney. And yes, this month we've been diving into the topic of recycling. Recycling. Yeah, I feel much more justified in like my feeling of like where I want to dismiss someone or be like done with a conversation. I usually just end with, yeah, all right, have a great day and and, uh, and please recycle. Like, I've been doing that for the past several months. Um, In person? Yeah, or on the phone. Um, or like on Twitter when I'm yeah. like done with the troll or whatever, my sign off is basically if I'm like, cool, see you later, please recycle. It basically is kind of like better, just better than saying fuck you. It certainly is. Yeah. Yes, it certainly is. Um, that makes, uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to use it as like a, uh, this conversation's over sort of a thing online. Yeah. yeah, but in person though, that's that's dedication. That's pretty cool. I mean, I said that I basically said it to my parents. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's, that's my fair. Fits me then. Um, I'm in my house today, so it's a month construction zone. A little bit, um, yeah. So maybe a little bit echoey. A little strange. It's actually not surprisingly. Like, yeah, last. That's why I have my headphones on and w- instead of the microphone. Yes. Yep. Um. And like clockwork, my our our gardener, uh, community gardener guy is here uh, mowing the lawn. So I don't. I, maybe this doesn't pick that up, but we're rolling with it. We we're, we're just yeah. you know we you know environments change surroundings change I guess that's kind of the same thing but um we are adaptable yeah we're back in full shelter in place lockdown here in the Netherlands it is December 15th of 2020 so Mm -hmm. lockdown yeah you have a lot more concise rules than we do here um it's like restaurants have a lot of strict rules they can't have indoor or outdoor seating I think anymore here um but it's kind of a free-for-all you know America (laughs) who knows who's in charge we don't know um we actually don't know right now um (laughs) I think that the electors confirmed yesterday they all officially voted yesterday December 14th um to confirm the uh, electoral college vote. So I believe that that did happen. That's Um, great. That's what I heard, but you never know. mm -hmm. But now the Senate has to confirm the electoral college's confirmation of the... (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's so silly. Yeah. Can we just have a popular vote? Um, Anywho. um, Yeah. Yeah. So... This month, we've been learning about and talking about recycling, and today, we are going to be talking about a book. A, a book we read. Book. book we read. Yeah. Yes. Um, reduce, reuse, reimagine. Yeah. And this is part of our monthly book series. This is our first, like, environmental, this is our first environmental book. Yes, it um, is. But- from the podcast was off brand we read a book like business related or a lot of mindset stuff um those are really good and um but now we're going to switch to each each month a topic so this month yeah we read reduce reuse reimagine by beth porter mm-hmm. nailed it i don't even have it written down yeah wow you didn't even cheat just, oh my gosh i have I it just, up right in front of me wow okay. i just remember i just remember <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. Um, yeah, it was kind of my first experience with reading a book. Like, I don't read a whole lot of like nonfiction y type things. And us, like, we were doing, yeah, featuring businessy books, but this is totally different because it's really just kind of about a, one particular industry. Yeah. Um, and it's informational. Yeah. Um, yeah. Instead of like before, we, it was a lot of mindset, a lot of business, a lot of conceptual stuff. And this is very like, here's the history of it. And here's, here's what recycling is and what it means to recycle and what it is as a concept. And like, it kind of brought light the complexities of a recycling system really well I think it did that well with this book mm -hmm. um but yeah it was did it was kind of hefty it, was it hefty. definitely was a <laughs> yeah there were some times where I yeah I definitely had to like really we listened to it on audible I had to like re-listen to it because I was like whoa okay that was like a whole bunch of information mm -hmm. just jam-packed in there but um it was really resourceful and it, and I think that a couple of weeks ago when we first, when we had our first podcast that was about recycling, um, mm -hmm. we had a lot of questions and there was a lot of things that we were just sort of like, why is this the way that it is? Right. <laughs> and this book was really good at, at answering a lot of that. So like, yeah. um, I definitely think that it was, it was cool to learn about and I think that it was really it was, it was put together in a way that, yeah, helps folks kind of understand the, the history behind the industry and then the current situation and mm -hmm. kind of how, how we as individuals play a role in that whole thing. <laughs> and, um, and I liked that it yeah, really focused a lot on kind of individual responsibility, which I appreciate. Yeah, and like why it's the individual's responsibility, because that's something that we talked about a lot in our last podcast, which was that like, why does it always fall to the individual? Mm -hmm. Why can't it fall on brands or, and there's, I think, ways that it can um, be up to the brand, but really that comes down to the individual research and the communication about how the individual can do the recycling. And I think something that is really important is that it's so local. Like I had no, I didn't realize how local every, every part of the system actually is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's like an integral part of a community, but something that's like behind the curtain a bit. Yeah. 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 Which is interesting. And I don't know, like, I don't think it should be. I don't think that like waste mm -hmm. management should be something that is like hidden. Like I understand why that's not something that like richer communities have ever wanted within their, <laughs> their line of sight. Cause right. it's not pretty, whatever that means, but like, it's, it's a very, integrated part of how we live as human beings and and I think it should be something that we're more connected to and and understand more about the inner workings of and yeah and actually kind of see it in action um yeah and in that way like I was thinking about this earlier today because I think in several other books we've also mentioned this but this one in particular why isn't this taught in school like yeah specifically like in home ec or health class, why isn't this information taught? And mm -hmm. like, I, I would, I would actually recommend, I don't know if I would recommend this book to everybody because you definitely have to really care about recycling and really want to know, like, it's got to be your like jam. Yeah. You want to read this book. Yeah. The last like hour, the chapter nine, I think would be really good um, because that one is all about what you can and can't recycle and the mm -hmm. rules and what like about plastic bags or coffee cups or like um, that. Really actionable. That's a really actionable chapter, but the mm -hmm. other stuff is like 
this is a textbook. Yeah, it definitely had textbook vibes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fully, which is yeah. cool. It's cool. That's great. Like in 10th or 11th grade, like health mm-hmm. class or home ec, that this would have been way better than a lot of the random shit that we learned about that was like, I don't need this. I don't even remember things that we actually learned about in. I remember learning about sex. I remember learning about kind of about sex, like the mechanics of how that worked. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember learning about kind of about like protein and carb and, and carbs and sugar. Like kind of about nutrition. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I uh, wow, yeah. I I really don't I don't remember taking any sort of classes like that um, in high school. But but something like this is just sort of there should be like a how to live in society class, you know, yeah, that maybe talks like, about yeah, it would be like how to recycle, how to do your taxes. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I was just going to say, like, this would go in the class of like, how to do your taxes, how to be an adult, how, how to, to be, be a functional adult. member of society. Yeah. What else would go in that class? I would go. Respect, yeah. um, anti-racism. Yep, yep. Um, yeah. I think it's kind of, yeah, it's a lot of topics about sustainability, I think, like how, mm-hmm. how we as individuals play a role in this greater uh yeah community and uh, yeah like I don't know but also like life skills like like life skills yeah like taxes and savings and home uh, economics is supposed to be what where you learn that I learned how to bake an apple pie in home economics. That's solid knowledge. I don't know. I've never made an apple pie. So okay, yeah, but you can just like look up a recipe and follow well, it. Yeah, but we we didn't have that. We didn't have I mean Google was like brand spanking new when we were in you high school. A, you could use a recipe book. Like that yeah. that exists that's existed for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't need the, the recipes for how to make an apple pie. I appreciate that knowledge because I like pie, but I really think that like learning how to recycle in my community would have been a much better use of my time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that learning how to be accountable for your actions at a younger age would make the process easier, um, for when we have to make light like changes in our life and I think that this book talks about that in a, in a way um because it they it they're very it's very open about how you know making sustainable choices and choosing to recycle is an option it is not something that we are required to do and right. and and particularly in the States when things are more regulated and when there are more rules around something that tends to get people to um, turn off, turn away from it, right? They don't wanna be told what to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And it gives a lot of other examples for how different places kind of positively incentivize recycling. um, And and that is something I think is really cool, but, you know, we, we know making, asking people to make changes about their habits is a challenge. And, um, and, and I just think that my point is that if, if that was taught at an earlier age, that like the things that we consume have to go somewhere and we are, we are, we should be responsible about, about thinking about where that should go. Um, if that was taught at a younger age, I think it would make it a lot easier Mm -hmm. for some of these kind of bigger changes to happen because we would already be in the mindset. It would be kind of more of a habit of like, we understand that, yeah, we live in a place. Things don't disappear. It's not, yeah, yeah. (laughs) everything, every piece of plastic that was ever created is still here. Still exists. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you're right. And I think like the, she, the Porter, Beth, Beth Porter, right? Also does a very good job of, uh, she spends a lot of time talking about how and why recycling is the last word in reduce, reuse, recycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there are, p- there are bits and pieces of this book that are super insightful and bits and pieces of this book that are very factual and very like, this is what happens. And then she'll like kind of go into this concept around why it's happening and, and what that means. And I think that that's a really, that's really helpful. It was really helpful for me to like connect with the history and how recycling has been a part of American history forever and Mm -hmm. how it helped to shape American history and how American history helped to shape recycling and, and how, and like these two things aren't separate and it's always been there. It's not something new. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I found that really interesting. And that she says that the root of the problem is that we just have too much stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. And keep using the stuff you have if there's nothing wrong with it or consider fixing it. She always so talks about like repair, what is it? repair cafes. I yeah. think Tom should start a repair cafe. I think he would love that. Honestly, it's so freaking cool. Like yeah. they're like, I want that everywhere. Every town should have a repair cafe. Totally. Um, for those who don't know what that is, it's just sort of like a hub, a place where you can go and learn. You, you can bring in stuff that's broken Mm-hmm. You go to learn how to fix it. There's like classes. Yep. Um, it's kind of a community resource of like how to fix the well, things yeah. that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Or there are volunteers that will fix your stuff for you yeah. or like that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think, I think Tom would really love to have like a community repair cafe where he volunteered to. He'd help. be really good at it. Wow. He'd be so cute. Can you imagine him with like a little lady coming with like a broken thing? <laughs> Yeah, fix this for you. Anyway, so <laughs> All in Dash, of course, but yeah. Yeah. The the book definitely uses the Netherlands as a as like a positive example for a lot of yeah, the things that work. Yeah. I mean cool. it works. Like people here just follow rules and they it's very small. The Netherlands is the size of like like Maine or something it's like so small so it's easy if you like to put it into context Mm -hmm. it it takes three hours to drive diagonally across the whole country so like (laughs) it's easier to implement countrywide things but like even if you go down to the state level the states don't have that quite yet um And it's not federally mandated, like what can be recycled and how and who can, what can take. So I always think when the Netherlands is like on top, it's like, well, we, and then I can't compare that to the United States. I have to compare it to a state. Right. That's true. Right. Yeah. The scale is way different. Yeah. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. Oh, I learned a new really good word, planned obsolescence from this book oh I, yeah okay yeah that's a great it's a word concept that I understand but like she used it and explained it so beautifully and I that I'm it made me really excited to something something about the way she talks about it just clicked in my head like mm-hmm. planned obsolescence yeah yeah shit is just made to break yeah it's a thing that's real stop it it absolutely is. Yeah. It's, it's really crazy. I think it's like a, an ethical issue with like how companies are producing things is that, mm-hmm. yeah, that everything is focused so much on sourcing so cheaply that um, they don't care about quality anymore. Yeah. I mean, they're, there used to be a huge focus on on quality things and keeping your your stuff. You know, you could have like family heirlooms that are made, you know, a hundred years ago. 
that still function. Um, that doesn't really happen really, anymore. Right. That's not really a thing now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, I liked that. I liked that. Um, I hadn't thought about it that way of like the depth, the, uh, the depth of which planned obsolescence is just part of our life now. Yeah. Yeah. And how it came that way. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, that same concept is definitely tied to, you know, to fast fashion and how we just view things as, as single use and disposable because mm -hmm. they are so cheap and we're, we're not seeing the true cost of what it takes to produce those things and then to dispose of them once we're done with them. Um, right. Because we don't see either of those sides, we're left in this rose colored glasses, you know, we're bl blinders yeah. on, we don't see, you know, we, we just see like cheap. Yeah, we just go through like, like fast. Yeah. Right. Done and, it, done with it. and and in order to like get people to understand why that particular lifestyle of, of, you know, fast consuming, throwing things away, consumer culture is bad. I think you have to shed light on the other sides of it, the, the, the yep. sourcing and what we do when it has become waste. Mm -hmm. um the the full life cycle of what we're we're consuming we have like we have to have better insight on that or else people are just gonna live in this like well i buy it because it's cheap right. forever right but yeah she about halfway through the book um <laughs> gives us this quote Recycling is managing our materials to extend their usefulness and reduce our environmental impact. So, yeah, you think I, I, I heard it and then I thought, oh, like it, managing our materials to extend their usefulness. That's, that's a piece that gets dropped off a lot. It's like we think, oh, we just recycle it. It goes through the machine, whatever. But the fact is, if you're not buying recycled material and recycled product, you're not recycling. And like that, that was such a key point here. Mm -hmm. And the extend their usefulness piece, like I get recycling is managing our materials to reduce our environmental impact. But there's that piece of like extending the usefulness part and buying recycled like materials and trying to recycle objects that you have, like that's something that you don't see all the time. And the yeah. statement, if you're not buying recycled material, you're not recycling was so strong for me. And I was like, oh yeah. That's true, right. I guess that makes sense. Like it, that's what's closing the loop. That's is, how, yeah. Yeah. That's if, if you are not, yeah. Consuming goods that are made from like post-consumer waste, then you're not closing that loop. You, right. That, and, and that was a cool, really actionable part of the book where she was kind of talking about how, yeah, we as consumers need to demand that brands are sourcing recycled materials. Cause if we want to to close that loop, right? We need to want to purchase things that were recycled because that's what's going to incentivize those brands and those bigger businesses to then purchase recycled materials. They're mm -hmm. not going to just do it just because like they need to see that their consumers want that. And right. um, so that was a really cool actionable piece from this book was that like, yeah, okay, we need to demand that brands are sourcing recycled materials because- exactly that's what's gonna make this come full circle. And that's an interesting thing that we'll, we'll talk about. I think it's gonna be our next podcast where we have a guest, um, yeah. Marissa Segundo. Um, she joined us and, um, and that was a really, really cool chat. So stay tuned yeah, for that incredible. one as well. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, I something you said triggered me and I what did you say before that 
I got really um, excited. That, yeah, brand, uh, we need to d- demand that brands are oh. sourcing recycled materials. Yeah, um, on that same note, but on the other side, so Coca-Cola is the biggest producer of plastic, specifically virgin plastic in the world. Um, try to divest for them if you like, like fuck that company. Um, but like, um, I think sorry. you could say that louder. Fuck Coca Cola, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As if there's a Coca Cola bottle over there because we had a guest that like drinks Coke Zero and I gave him so much shit about it on Saturday, but it is like product placed in the window. So I need to like get rid of that. Yeah. But, um, guys, it's a thing. Like people are really into, coca-cola and they it's made all these yeah. what it's an addiction in it's some an addiction point. it is yeah. completely oh my god like yeah um i'm not gonna get into that but like we i coca-cola made like all of those promises like we're gonna go environmental we're gonna go right like we're gonna be eco we're gonna try to go carbon neutral like they made some promises when um not too long ago. This is relatively new. Okay. Yeah. Um, so says the Twitter world. Sure. They have made some bullshit promises. We all know it's bullshit and here's why and what you can do about it. They refuse to stop making plastic bottles. They have no intent on slowing down. In fact, they're going to make more plastic bottles because their consumers like them. That's their reason for it. So... If you can, if you can, like write to them, ask them to use recycled plastic, ask them to switch back to glass bottles. Glass is like recyclable forever. Mm-hmm. So, and it, and using recycling, using recycled glass costs a lot less money and energy and materials than making new. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Coca Cola makes double the amount, more than double the amount of plastic waste every year than the the next lowest brand, which I think is Nestle. Hmm. And they have no interest in slowing down or using more recycling, more recycled plastic in their bottles because they think, because they say that consumers like them, but actually people are just addicted to their fucking product. Right. And they don't care what bottle it's in as long as they can like get their sugar water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that's a total cop out to say our consumers like this, so we're going to continue doing this way. Like, no, if you actually gave a shit, you would change it. Your consumers are going to stay your consumers no matter what it's packaged in. Yeah. Um, people that are like loyal to that brand are going to remain loyal. And it's, it, yeah, don't put that shit on people. Like, yeah, you're Coca-Cola. You can make this change if you feel compelled to and you totally. just don't because it's going to cut into your profit margins. So go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I, yeah, that was a bummer. Like I I was kind of, I kind of am watching Coca-Cola, Nestle, and Pepsi because I want to see what they're doing because they are the, the, they're the top three plastic producers in the world. Um, I've tried really hard to kind of stop buying products from those three companies because they're not slowing down with their plastic. And I think that's a major problem. It is a major problem. It's not something I think that's objective. Like I need to remind, I need to say, like, that's an objective problem. That it those, is, like, yeah. So, I, yeah. And so I don't buy products from those three companies. And so I watch them and I watch their, like, new Twitter news. And I saw back to back, like, Coca-Cola made these promises. Coca-Cola says it's not going to stop producing plastic bottles because consumers like them. So if you, if you, Drink Coke if you're addicted to their products, please send them an email or a tweet or blast them somehow and show them that you do want them to start using recycled materials in in their packaging. Any bit helps, yeah. Anything, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, as individuals who start to, you know, 
who are interested in, in sustainability, which we hope that you are, our, our wonderful listeners here. Um, and otherwise, why would they be here? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But if you're, you know, we're talking about recycling first, because this is typically something that like people, the first thing that people are, are kind of exposed to when they're, mm-hmm. when you're learning about sustainability and, and production and consumption and all of that stuff. And um, yeah, so I think reaching out to brands and, and knowing that you as an individual consumer can and do have a voice and like, no matter the size of the brand, like mm-hmm. one person can put a tweet out there and get it a brand to comment back and it absolutely can go viral. And it absolutely- I did, can. I got Colgate to, to comment back. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and, and, and just putting that pressure on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they need to feel that pressure because it's a, it's, it's, it's the only way for a lot of these brands to these, these massive drivers of like revenue and revenue flow and sourcing. And especially like when it comes to like plastics, Mm -hmm. you know, the plastic injury, the plastic injury, the plastic industry is huge. And there are a few that are massive and they're driven by consumers. So if you start demanding things, that's, how they operate. Yep. Yep. They're not going to make the change unless people demand it. That's just, that's just the facts. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And at the same time, um, this book also talks about how, uh, shaming doesn't really work that like people often don't recycle or don't want to be a part of the recycling industry because they don't, either they don't believe in climate change, which I think we're like edging past that a little bit, or um, they're just really overwhelmed by, Mm -hmm. by the industry as a whole. And um, yeah, Marissa did give some really good tips about that. So definitely about like how to speak. Cause I, I told her that like, I'm that annoying girl at the party that's like, where can I recycle this? I don't know. And um, she she said, she gave some like really nice tips as to like what to ask and how to open that conversation and, and what to say. So we won't go over those here, but just listen stay to tuned. The, Stay tuned, listen to that <laughs> one. Yeah, it's, um, it's a delicate balance. Yeah, because you don't want, people don't have positive reactions when they feel shamed into doing right. something. Um, so yeah, in a lot of places there have been attempts at, um, as a, at positive reinforcements when people make, you know, more sustainable choices. Um, there's a really cool part of this book where she talks about something called moral licensing. Yep. Yeah, I was just looking at my notes on moral licensing. I I really like that. Whoa, sure. yeah. That was a term I had How never real? heard of, actually. How real is that, though? That kind of blew my mind. I It is absolutely something I am guilty of, like 1,000%. And knowing <laughs> a term, I'm like, it. I'm actually really thankful to kind of know the term now because it's not something I had ever really identified but like it allows you to call yourself out on it exactly yeah Yeah. so moral licensing is basically um you know kind of ingrained inherently in all of us we we have this desire to be a good person or to be perceived as a good person and and when you're making a sustainable choice like oh I'm gonna you know I just recycled that it it actually something in our brains convinces us that it's now okay to make a less sustainable choice or or reward ourselves like justification for yeah, yeah you you could yeah. say like oh because i just recycled that okay so well now i can spend some money on myself on amazon or something that's right. like morally a little compromising but because Mm -hmm. you've had that positive reinforcement that makes you feel like you're morally just Mm -hmm. you it's easier for you to justify making a less moral decision it's 
really, 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 really fascinating. And she spoke, she speaks on it in terms of actually, in terms of racism mm -hmm. a little bit, and also in terms of um, like recycling and sustainability, which I thought. Yeah. Was I think cool. about it in terms of food a lot. That's a big yeah. topic in our house is like, um, if we make dinner, then like we try to keep the sugar out of our house because there's a sugar addict that lives here. And, um, but it, it will very easily be like, we've done this thing, this good thing for dinner. Now let's have like a sweet snack. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. That's the big one for us is the sweet snack. Mm -hmm. So, but it's the same. It's exactly the same trigger. It's like, how can we balance our own moral licensing in our brain? We use moral licensing to balance like our feeling about how ethical or or healthy we are mm -hmm. because it can also tip the other way like oh man I didn't bring my coffee cup and I've used like more of these coffee cups which aren't recyclable everywhere so I better go choose a, a sustainable option or something yeah um, or like yeah I oh I went to Starbucks today maybe I'll I'll bring my reusable bag to the grocery store later like yeah, yeah it's kind of a yeah it is a, a balance but it's it's really interesting when we psychologically use that as justification for making bad choices yeah so that was a really interesting thing um yeah and she for talks folks, about how to make that stop too yeah 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 right for folks that like because at at a certain point making sustainable choices isn't something that we're constantly always having to balance at a certain point we're kind of it's just a habit now right it's just the choice you make yeah always it's not it's not like a morality thing it's not an external I think this I think moral people make these choices it's mm -hmm. just like yeah of course I recycle like right. yeah of course I take my coffee cup. Of course I always have my reusable bag. Like these things just become ingrained habits. And then it's not like a fact. It's not a balancing act there. Right. You don't have to feel like you're making this decision for some yeah, external satisfaction or mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, yeah, that's just the way it is. Right. right. It becomes a normal part of, of life and and recycling has sort of gotten there. And she talks about like using reusable bags and using reusable water bottles and seeing more people using those things makes mm -hmm. you feel more inclined to do it. And it's all just kind of this positive feedback loop. Um, yeah. yeah. And we just kind of need more people to like get involved. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Just yeah. like, I think- share I'm thinking a lot about I've been asking a lot Tom a lot of questions to, like can you please tell me what's recyclable because I look like I for me it's a different issue because I just don't speak Dutch so when I Jeff when I directly translate things I don't know if I'm getting it right mm -hmm. um, but it's the same I it feels the same way maybe as somebody that like has never looked at, at recycling in their own language and I'm kind of feeling like, okay, well, maybe it's, maybe it's kind of the same. They don't exactly know what they're looking at because there's so many different types of plastic. There's like, do I separate caps or not? Do I, you know, like, what about metal caps? What about mm -hmm. like, you know, and, and I think she gives a, in this book, gives a ton of really good tips. That's chapter nine. I highly mm -hmm. recommend chapter nine to anybody. I'm not saying just go buy this book. Um, just for chapter nine but if your libraries are open maybe go sit for like 45 minutes in your local library I'm sh sure that this exists there and just like flip through those would be really nice yeah it's definitely got some tips and I I've I've, I've there was one particular quote that I really liked it was sort of when she was wrapping it all up. I think it was also in chapter nine where that's really, that was, I think the last chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so that was- Chapter 10 was like- 40. Yeah, it's just like, thanks. Uh, but um, she said that this was in, in reference to reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, and that these are pieces of a process that 
can start at any time. Yeah. Like there is no rules <laughs> that like, it's really just, you know, just, it's just about getting started. It's just about making that conscious choice to be more thoughtful and, and, and to like hold yourself more accountable for what we are consuming and how we are um, then, you know, then where, where that's going after that, um, how we're disposing yep. of our waste. And, um, and I thought that that was really nice that like, you know, there's no, start, there's no step one. Step one is just try. Right. It's just go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe don't yourself. buy that or maybe, yeah. maybe try to repair that before replacing it mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe looking at what you consume the most of, if it's like you drink a lot of plastic water bottles, okay, like get maybe up. try to start recycling those, just those, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah. th that is something that is recyclable pretty much anywhere. Um, yeah, or get, or just try to get a reusable water bottle that you can carry with you. That's a, that's even, even better option. Like if you yeah. can just not use the plastic, that would be awesome. Yeah um just like one step at a time really yeah, yeah yeah it's really about taking a step and then identifying that step as part of who you of how you live yeah because if you're doing it based on like then you go back to moral licensing like a, every step kind of has a moral licensing piece until it's part of what you how you identify mm -hmm. I think is what I kind of got from that which makes sense I think that's a reality but. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's always something that we'll have to be, that we're like weighing in the convenience of something versus making this choice out of the desire to be more sustainable um, until all of a sudden, yeah, you're just like, oh yeah, that's just my water bottle. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the one I carry all the time. It's yeah. just, yeah. Yeah. You always have a water bottle, which I think is awesome. It's, yeah, I, um, it actually used to kind of be something that I like was connected to like anxiety it was like, I wanted to always have water around me because I, it makes my, makes me feel better. Um, and I just kind of hate plastic water balls. They just, it's gross. It just tastes gross. And like, yeah, I, so I always shit into your body. Yeah. The way your water is structured is really important. Yes. Really this is true um yeah so it just kind of becomes a it's just a habit right and it doesn't mm -hmm. take that long for it to become a habit oh. like it really really doesn't and um I think that it's, for me it's a coffee cup mm, I always have like I have one here but I'm at a desk yeah <laughs> I yeah. always use jars I only use jars to drink yeah. out of actually I always have it with I always carry a coffee cup so I'm I've always been known as the girl with the cups, with the coffee, because I always have a coffee cup in my hand It's because I carry it with me because I never know when somebody's going to want to put coffee in there. It's important. Fill around it. Yeah. But even now in Noonan, like I just went and got my hair, it's a small town, but I just went and got my hair cut. And the lady was like, you always walk around with a coffee cup. And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, That's I do. That's thing. That's the thing. But I can, I can fill it with different stuff to drink and stay hydrated. I don't have, that was my big waste thing a few years ago mm. was that I, whenever I walk past a coffee shop, I get one. <laughs> so yeah, it's important for me to carry a coffee cup with me. Yeah. It's loud. It's not too bad. Actually. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Um, also, in this book, she talks about earth911.com, which is a dope website. Yeah, you can, I'm at it. I just, that's what I was typing a few minutes ago. It's just to like, see if this is something. I wrote it down in my notes and I was like, is that something I can suggest to people? It is. You can search for stuff, a, a product, and then put in your zip code and they will tell you if it's recyclable and how to recycle it and where to go. Um, 
they also have a phone line that you can call if you have questions. I, they, oh yeah. And they have a, they have a lot of content here, but it's very cool. That's awesome. That's like pretty much what we had been looking for. That is exactly what we were thinking about in terms of like a resource that you could access anywhere. Yeah, we should reach out to them and see if we can like do their SEO or something because that's not something that I was able to find. I had to hear it. Yeah, what a great resource though. Earth911.com and right up at the header, there's a where to recycle and yep. how to recycle link. Those are really cool. Wow. Yeah, and they have guides. It's great. Yeah, I'm into that website. Nice. Okay. Um, Solid. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that, like, you know, a lot of because recycling is such a reason, regional thing, really kind of a lot of the tips that we've been hearing over the course of the past few weeks when doing this research is just like contact your local people. Yeah. Um, or like go on your city's website. There's probably then links to the the waste management company, whatever it is. They're they're typically like private companies. They're um, called MERPS. They are called MERPS. LED recycling yeah. facility. Did I just uh -huh. do that? Yeah, super cool term, MRFs. Murph. Um, and um, yeah, if you have questions, then then they definitely have folks that are prepared to give you answers and specifically to your region. But yeah. a, a resource like this is really nice for those of us who maybe want to do a little bit more independent research before talking to another human being, which is... <laughs> yeah <laughs> I have a very hard time making phone calls I hate me yeah. I'm not good at it so yeah raise yeah. your hand if that's you I too can. let us know comment <laughs> and yeah, you hate you're in the right place yeah. yeah yes we uh I I would do probably hours of internet research before actually just picking up a phone call and Same. talking to a person who could give me the answer immediately <laughs> What is that? Why? I don't know. I, know. I don't know. I tried to explain that to someone literally yesterday because I have packages that need to show up. And he was like, just call them. He just said it to me six times. Just call them. I was like, I can't. I can't. He was like, I'm going to call them for you. That, that'll that do it. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, but um, Actually, I think I said, don't enable me. This is a problem I need to work through. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a, it's a true. Your response than mine. Yeah. <laughs> I've been like, yeah, okay, great. Bye. <laughs> Tell me what the answer is. <laughs> Let me know. But yeah, no, I, I need to, I need to deal with that problem. A lot of things in the Netherlands are phone call based, it seems like yeah you have to call the government a lot I have to call people and they always like they I mean okay I live they just speak Dutch that's because they speak Dutch here okay uh -huh. I, don't, I don't get to be frustrated about that no um but I am and it definitely doesn't um, nevertheless <laughs> but I am it does it also like doesn't make it easier for me to make these phone calls because I know I'm gonna have to be like Hundach, like uh can you please speak English to me? Right. Yeah. Hey, you know, that kind of connects to something in the book is like kind of feeling like an inconvenience or like you are, you're messing with the like norm because, you know, you're, you'd be asking them to speak in English for you. And that was something that in the book where it was like, you know, if you're saying, if someone, if you're checking out and like, there's they're like oh do you want a bag and you say no then like they'd be like what like you're you're right like some of these sustainable choices are outside of the norm so it's it does kind of sometimes feel like you're the weird one that is forcing them to do something outside of their normal yeah. kind of flow um which was an interesting thing that I think I think that's something I've 
experienced personally is that like I don't want to inconvenience them so I'll just take the plastic bag but like I don't want it yeah. <laughs> like so it, it is something that every definitely faces. something to like do is to say like stop yeah no thank you yeah we kind of just have to normalize that that like you know sometimes we will have to say um, no. yeah. yeah just be vocal about mm -hmm. our choices yeah and mm -hmm. um you don't you're not forced to take a plastic bag at any place it's yeah. an option <laughs> it is a choice that should be left to you as the purchaser of the goods mm -hmm. but um anywho that just reminded me of that part of the book yeah that's a good part to bring up <sighs> yeah um so basically we're pro this book read it if you're into recycling, definitely read it. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to be able to connect with history. Um, if you just want tips for recycling, check out earth911.com or yeah, just go to your local library and get chapter nine or stay tuned for next episode of environmental podcast with Marissa Segundo from recycle.com she's so rad she really really like was our teacher um for the episode that's coming out next week yeah. um she's a phenomenal educator communicator about this stuff she's super passionate about it it was really cool to be able mm -hmm. to uh to have her on as a guest we're very very thankful to her yeah for, i'd for love to have her back she's down to come back so I think as we go through this, we should definitely, because she also also did want to talk about um, like discrimination and inclusivity in the sustainability industry, which is definitely something that we are going to cover. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is a book reference, uh, a book recommendation that Beth Porter made, Dumping mm -hmm. in Dixie. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe something we should we should visit. It's about environmental racism. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's a big topic that I can't wait to learn more about. Um, it's definitely something that I studied in college. I feel, yeah, I feel very compelled to learn more about that. And uh, it is something that is actively happening. Like it is still very much <laughs> happening. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it is. It is, it's been historically, um, yeah, I'm excited. I don't know when, what month we're going to talk about that, but we're going to work up to it because mm -hmm. I think we've talked about like having these more tangible, learning these more tangible things, I think will give us better language for the conceptual pieces that we want to talk about later on, like this, yeah, environmental racism or like safe water for everyone or like these types of like, how do you end poverty? Well, I don't really know the like, ins and outs of that without talking them about these other learning about these other more base topics first yeah. I think. yeah 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 so I mean that is really what this podcast is all about is just kind of following along on the journey of like the interconnectedness of all of the the different aspects of sustainability and how they overlap and um yeah. And as we learn one thing, we uncover new and different things that are then <laughs> gonna, like it's a trickling effect. It's gonna radiate yeah. outwards and into new topics. And, and that is um, yeah. Yeah, the beauty of learning about a particular thing is that is, is learning about how connected it is with every other aspect of mm -hmm. our lives. And yeah, uh, she does a really good job of making those interconnections in this book. And I think that's helpful yeah that was helpful for me um yeah and next month we're going to read a book about packaging yes we are going to be i found one cool okay yeah 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 um yes we are going to be talking about packaging i think that that is it is definitely more like industry like this will that will be um you know i think quite relevant for brand owners and folks who are producing a product that want to do so more sustainably or want to understand um mm -hmm. some of the options that you may have um so that's cool yeah i'm trying to find it but i don't think 
Oh, we bought it. Okay, we did get it. Um, I, for some reason, I think it's just cold packaging. Uh, the future of packaging. The future of packaging. Yeah. yeah. Future of packaging by Tom Satsky. S Z A K Y. Um, that'll be what we're reading next month. We'll also have an industry expert come with and chat with us, mm -hmm. um, solidifying that right now. So we'll have more info on that in the not too distant future. But uh, these are really fun. They're really cool. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, man. So yeah. Um, so we have a few more times that we're going to be talking about recycling and the recycling industry and yeah. we're definitely going to be touching on um kind of some more actual pieces if you are a brand owner um mm -hmm. in a few weeks from now and um next week we have the change maker chat coming out with marissa and the following after that we have the our like overview one where we talk about like kind of everything we've learned plus like cool stuff you could do for your business yes 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 so definitely stay tuned for those. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, we would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. Um, we're loving that these are these are something that uh, folks are, are enjoying and we hope that you're learning along with us. And uh, yeah, so if you, yeah, if you like the video, then definitely give us a like and subscribe to our channel. It would really mean a lot. We are, yes. um, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely putting a lot of, energy and attention into this new podcast um because it's something we're really stoked about and I think mm -hmm. that we want it to be a really open and transparent and engaging conversation that we're having like with you guys and you're learning with us too we don't know everything you know we're interested in sustainability and we've you know have some bits and pieces of experience but as we're only continuing to learn, there is uh, a never ending amount of, of things that we can learn about and how things are, um, how things actually work. So um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, all right, yeah. we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.